Now we're going to be having a look at the comping features built into Studio One. So let's head over to the record mode over here. And what I want to be having a look at is takes to layers, because this will really allow us to benefit from the comping features that we have available in Studio One. So I'm gonna make sure that's selected and let's go ahead and close our control panel. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and close the console down. So before we get into looking at the comping features specifically, I wanna have a really quick look, just an overview of how the takes to layers work. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create a test track over here. I'm gonna right click, choose a new audio track, and let's just call this test. And I guess we can move this down to the very bottom here. And I'm gonna quickly bring up my console here and let's go ahead and select my input. So it's already set up properly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and record enable this. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna back up and let's just set a one bar loop over here. So I'm just gonna go right over to here. So we're gonna set this to be a one bar loop. Let's go ahead and close down our console again and let's have a look at what happens here. Okay, so I'm gonna just wind back to the beginning and let's go ahead and start recording some takes. Okay, so this is take one, take one. All right, this is take two, take two. And this is take three, take three. Okay, so you'll see as soon as we finished up here, we automatically have this expanded view that's allowing us to see all of our layers here. And down below, we have all of our different takes here. So you'll notice when we bring our cursor to any of these parts over here, these layers that we have the range tool. Now it's currently set to the grid mode. And typically when I'm doing any comping, I usually take the grid mode off. And the reason for this being that if I have any you know, breaths or I really need to finesse something to do a really, really tight comp, that I'm not snapping to a grid and I can kind of really finesse the details on this. So you'll see here that we've got a couple different options on these individual layers here. So for instance, I've got this option over here, which allows me to remove the layer. Then I've got an option to duplicate the layer. I can solo the layer and I can activate the layer. So currently we've got the last take that we did, which was take three is available on our main layer here. And if we go ahead up to our layer section, you'll see that we have layer one, take one, two, and three. So this is kind of like our main comp. So this is like the result of any comping that we do. All of those comps will be available on a main edit layer on the very top. Now the next thing I wanna have a look at here is let's say that we have loop mode off here. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable my loop. Now watch what happens if I just go ahead and roll a take over top of this layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push record. And now I'm recording a brand new take right over top. So you can see that it's added a new layer. And now within these layers, we can do things like make choices as to which parts of which individual take that we want to promote to our main layer, which is sitting on top here. All right. So now that we have an understanding of how that works, let's go ahead and get rid of this track. So now let's have a look at working with some vocals. So I've got a vocal take set up here and this one has three different layers in it. So in order to view these layers here, I can simply right click within the arrange window and expand layers. Now you may have noticed here that I also have a shortcut that's been mapped out because I find this is a really handy shortcut to have instead of having to use my mouse all the time. So if you'd ever want to do that, all we have to do is head over to Studio One Keyboard Shortcuts. In the search menu, let's just click Expand. You'll notice here that we have Expand Layers. Then we basically just need to select this, enter a key combination, assign it, apply, and click OK. But in this particular case, I've already got mine done, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this. All right, so now I can toggle really freely just by clicking my Control Command shortcut that I created, my keyboard shortcut, I can make these layers visible if I need to do any comping quickly. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's go through the workflow on how we can use this in the most efficient way possible. So like I said, I usually have snapping off for this type of thing. Let's go ahead and make our loop available, our loop selection. And the last thing I wanna do is select all of these and let's do a Shift S so we're viewing everything in full vertical resolution. All right, so let's wind back to the beginning here. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we've got some different options in terms of how we addition things. So we currently have the last take, which is take three, is available on our main layer here. So if I was to play now, I'd be hearing that take. Sixteen years later in this young lady. All right, but that's not necessarily what we want to do when we're comping. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to make decisions on which phrases that we want to keep and which ones we want to promote to our master layer. 
Okay, so let's talk about how we can do this. Well, one way we can do it here is if I solo out this track, so I'm just listening to this track in the project now, you'll notice that I also have additional solo buttons over here on these individual layers. So what this means is that if I wanted to solo out these individual layers, I could go ahead and do so just by clicking here. So now, for instance, I'm listening to take two. 16 years later in this young lady. Now, if I wanted to listen to the take three version of that, 16 years later in this young lady or the take one version 16 years later in this young lady so that's one way that we can do it but i gotta be honest with you whenever i end up doing this what happens sometimes is if i'm moving quickly i'll be moving along trying to comp something together and i haven't realized that i actually have one particular layer selected so as i'm trying to make my comps i maybe forget that i have that layer selected and then when I close this up and I listen back to the result, I'm going, wait a second, that doesn't make sense. I don't remember selecting that. So we have a couple other different options available too. One of them being this tool up here, which is the listen tool. So what we can do with the listen tool is that we can go ahead and push the eight key on our numeric keyboard here. And I can select any point on any event, which are these individual layers and listen from here. Speaking to a crowd. Now I can move here. Speaking to a crowd. Now I can move here. Speaking to a crowd. And you can see as I move along, wherever I move along and I press the cursor down on the mouse, it automatically solos the appropriate layer. But they, but they, you know the joy. All right. So that's another option. But then when we have to make our decision based on which one we like the best, we still have to go back to the pointer tool in order to get our range tool to be able to select that. So I'll show you what I like to do. When I'm working with this particular workflow, what I do is I leave the pointer tool on. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the individual phrases. I'll go phrase by phrase. So for example, right now we're listening to three. So let's have a listen to that. We're on take three. Let's go ahead and play from here. 16 years later in this young lady speaking. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and with the range tool here, I'm going to select the take two. So now I'm listening to take two and that's been promoted to our main layer, which is what we're listening to. 16 years later in this young lady. Now all I have to do here is with the range tool, I can double click here and I'm listening to the take one's version of that. 16 years later in this. 16 years later in. This, 16 years later. 16 years later in. And even though we selected the layer three, it still recalled the range selection that we had made. So this is the particular way that I like to work. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to extend this out right out to the front. So now let's move on and let's listen from here. Speaking to a crowd who needed to see she tried and tried. Okay, let's go ahead and now we're going to pick up from, let's listen to this one first and we'll put it right to here. Speaking to a crowd who needed to see she tried and tried. Okay, not so sure about that. Let's listen to the third one. Speaking to a crowd who needed to see. And back to the second. Speaking to a crowd who needed to see. She tried and tried. Okay, so I'm happy with everything up to here. Let's see if we can get tried and tried. Let's see if we have that better in any one of these other takes. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's listen to take three. We'll give ourselves a little bit of pre-roll from here. She tried and tried. She tried and tried. Let's listen to take one, double click. She tried and tried. Okay, there's a little bit of an EQ difference going there, but it's not too bad. Back to two. She tried and tried. Back to one. She tried and tried. Okay, so maybe what we can do is we can use everything from take two up to here, but let's try to get the very last word here from take one. So I can extend this selection over here. Now, one thing that I find helps is using data zoom. So we can use the data zoom over here so we can kind of view a little bit more information of what we're working with. But I've actually mapped that out to a macro, my plus and minus keys on my keyboard. So I can just do that really quickly. And I find that comes in really, really handy. So what I'll probably try to do here, let's see if we can bring this over to here and kind of split the difference on this. So I'm just going to drag my range across here and let's see if this sounds any better. I'm going to back up a little bit and let's play from here. Tried and tried, but they rolled there. 
Okay, so you can see that this segue happened halfway between two words. So let's go ahead here. Take two seems to be the better of everything right now. I'm gonna bring my data zoom back down and let's go here. Let me just find exactly right about there. That should be good. Bring that back down and let's select this next phrase over here and let's play from here. But they rolled there. Okay, so that's one option. Double click. But they rolled there. That's another option. But they rolled there. Okay, I think I like two. But they rolled there. Okay, let's see if the word there is better in take one or take two. Or sorry, take one or take three. But they rolled there. Okay, let's try take three. But they roll their eyes. Okay, let's just, for the sake of demonstration, let's choose this word from take three, and let's see if we can find eyes from take two. Their eyes. Now let's try take one. Their eyes. Okay, you know what? That's, that's kind of delicate. It's kind of nice. Let's just use that for now. And then from take two, let's just swipe across here. Let's listen to this phrase. And I'll bring my cursor back to here. One day you'll know the meaning. So there's an option. One day you'll know the meaning. Don't like that one. One day you'll know the meaning and make it. Actually like that one the best there. And let's see what we have for take two in this phrase. Bring this back. Making a choice. She's speaking from. Take one. Making a choice. She's speaking. And take three. Making a choice. She's. I think I like take two the best. Making a choice. She's speaking from her heart. All right. So now what we can do, let's just scroll over to the end here. Maybe we'll zoom out a little bit. So now what we can do here, now that we're happy with this, is we can basically go ahead and collapse this. So now let's say that I've comped this together and I'm happy with this as a result. So the next thing that I would probably do is I would go through this track and I'm gonna be looking for volume inconsistencies within the tracks. So one thing that I can do if I have any difference in level is we can really easily use the event gain. So let's go ahead and select this particular event for instance and I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. Now, anything that was coming across as being a little bit too loud, I could also come and pull these down. So I can do a little bit of leveling off before the compression. So let's just go ahead and maybe we can bring this area and this one. We can bring both of these. Let's just bring these down a little bit here. And this is just kind of fine tuning and finessing this over here so that we can get the best result possible. Now you'll notice if I open up my takes here that nothing's changed on these. We don't see any volume reflect. So for instance, on this one over here, where the gain has been set to minus 0.6, if I were to push this up, you know, we're not seeing that reflected here, but it is reflected in the actual comp. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset this. Now, I can also use some shortcuts. If I have something that's really loud, I could, for instance, hold down the Option key, Alt on a PC, and then using the minus on my numeric keyboard, I can bring this down in 6 dB increments. Now, if I add the Shift key to that, I can bring this down in really fine detail. See, I'm doing 0.1 increments now, which is really nice. And I can actually move along with my left and right arrow keys and just kind of visually, uh, you know, set this up by using the Shift key and the Option, and I can kind of get my gain sitting really nicely. All right. So now that I'm done that, one thing that I like to do is I always like to leave this track. I always like to leave this so that I can back up to it at a later given point in time. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. Now what I like to do is we have a couple different options. So one option would be that we could actually duplicate this layer and then we could add an entirely new layer and then we could merge this or bounce it, consolidate it into a brand new file so that we can send it over to Melodyne. But what I like to do is I like to make a completely new file and then I like to make this one hidden. So I'm gonna do a Shift Command A, which is gonna select everything that I currently have on this track. Now I'm gonna do an option drag to an empty spot here, which is gonna do a time locked copy, but only of these events. So what I'll do from this point with all of the events selected, I'm gonna go ahead and bounce that down. Now then I'd come up to my main track over here. I'm gonna select this, Shift Option A to select everything that we have on this layer here. I'm gonna switch over to my Mute tool. Let's go ahead and mute this, open up my track list. Let's go ahead and hide that and close it. All right, now I've got a brand new track that I've done all my editing. I've consolidated everything. And now at this point, I can send it over to Melodyne so that I can continue to do my work with any pitch correction that's needed within Studio One.
In the next video, we're going to be having a look at some additional options that we have available in both the console and the arrange window that we can use to streamline our workflow in Studio One.